distributed operating system as uh, we have learned about network operating system dos or distributed operating system it provides more feature than network operating system user are able user are able to access remote source, uh, resources just like they are local and the data and process migration is under the control of dos we'll talk about this data migration and process migration so what is this data migration if say you as a user need to work on a remote file this is very remote so what you can do you can transfer the entire file to the other side and modify the file you can transfer whole of the file and modify this is quite inefficient because if you just want to change a small part then there is no point in picking up the whole file but if you want to change the whole file or you know part of whole file which is quite uh, significant then it is good idea to bring this file right the other thing is if this is a file just transfer that portion which is required so just transfer only that necessary portion of a file which is uh, needed for immediate task and if other portion is needed now take this and this can be transferred and after the modification only that part which you have taken can be written back transferred back computation market migration now you want to compute something so you need to invoke certain functions or procedure at another site and then you have to get the result so this is this you can done by rpc that is remote procedure call so access to file carried out remotely is computation migration initiated by the rpc so rpc it uses the uh, datagram protocol that is udp user datagram protocol on internet unlike the uh, tcp and uh, which is uh, used to execute any routine on the remote site or function or procedure and you can also send message to remote site so now remote site site now opens up a new processor it will execute the task and send back the result and it will close and there can be concurrent and bidirectional execution also between the sites this is also possible when we talk about process migration so this is just a you know extension of computation migration and uh, this why we need it process migration we why we why we want process to be executed at different sites because we want load balancing that means all the sites should have even balance then you want this computation to be speedy that is we want to reduce the total process turnaround time and we have certain hardware and software preferences we need specialized hardware or software we need specialized processor and hardware for software we need we want some uh, software specific software to be dealt with and which is uh, cost effective also way this way is cost effective and when we talk about data access if uh, you know data has to be moved then the remote processes can be more efficient this is process migration so there are two techniques to move processes in a network when we talked about the procedure here we are talking about the processes and processes are simply the program under execution first thing is the system may hide it can hide the fact that the process has migrated from the client it has migrated from the this is client this is say remote so it can hide so no user programming is needed to accomplish this process migration here the second thing is now the user explicitly specify how the process should migrate and this is just to satisfy our preference for certain hardware or software 